I recently watched Stranger Things. One of the parts I found interesting was when Dustin's compass goes haywire and starts spinning non-stop. They believe the compass is broken, but what's actually happened was the compass aligned itself with a closer, greater magnetic field, which in this case was a gate, aka a vortex. They then follow the compass to identify and pass through the portal slash gate into the underworld. To a lot of people, this may mean nothing, but when I think of how dowsing and tuning thoughts work, how magnetic fields really exist, and also the talk throughout history, including the Bible, of gates both in heaven and hell, we are aware of a grid system upon the earth which people refer to as ley lines or dragon lines, which we will look at further. It's been said the pyramids of Egypt is a gateway along with many more, replicating the chakra system that exists in the human body upon where these lines meet and cross. If this is true, then what happened in Stranger Things when Dustin actually found a portal in which he could transcend the realm isn't fantasy but is an actual possibility. There are many theories about the world, its layout, the design, is it flat, is it the globe? But ultimately, no matter what model you take, the possibility of ley lines and vortexes existing is very real. For some people believe it's at the centre of the earth, Some people believe there are many vortexes around the earth like a chakra system. Others believe there is a great wall which surrounds the earth, which there are passages that one may pass through. As I've said, no matter what fear you take, the possibility of a gate always seems present. Dude, I'm telling you, you're taking us the wrong way. It's north. I'm positive, I checked them out. You do realize that Skull Rock, it's like a super popular makeout spot? Yeah, so? Yeah, well, it wasn't popular until I made it popular. My walkie was busted. Boom! I was right. Skull Rock was north. Seriously, you're serious? Mm -hmm. This compass worked correctly when we left the wheelers. It was correct when we got in the car on Curly, but it started to slip the further east we went. Lucas, do you remember what can affect a compass? an electromagnetic field. In the presence of a stronger electromagnetic field, the needle will deflect towards that power. So either there's some super big magnet around here, or there's a gate. All I know is that something is causing this disturbance, and the last time we've seen anything like it, it was a gate, and I hope. Something's happening. There's a gate in Lover's Lake. Whoa. Dustin, your, your compass has gone from wonky to wonky with a capital ah. Steve, what are you doing? Somebody's got to go down there and check this thing out. There's a gate down there? It's technically a water gate? Water gate! <laughs> There are said to be many grids that operate throughout and around the world, but the crystalline grid is said to link the crystals of the earth. Where this grid crosses are major portals, vortexes, and dimensional doorways that connect this earth to other dimensional worlds. Just as when the meridians are free and flowing, and so we are in good health within our body, so is it so with the grids of the earth. The ancients were aware of this and constructed pyramids, temples, standing stones, sewn circles to align this energy with the stars and the inner earth to hold the beam as it were, as well as creating dimensional gateways and to bring forth higher frequencies that aid healing. The major junctions of the grid are often called dragon layers or serpent vortexes. These portals are spiraling vortexes that spin clockwise and anti-clockwise. This is how all the energy in the universe is said to move. 
The spiraling energy is the serpent energy life force that flows up the spine. As the serpent rises within us, so does the DNA activate the memory of who we are and we become a body of light. We raise our frequencies to higher dimensional worlds. For anyone that's watched my parks video will see that national parks and also local parks often have vortexes or gateways within them. And I have showed that a lot of these parks were where mines or collieries once were, telling me that there is something below these places. The crystalline grid is also known as Dragon or Ley Line. Portals are vortexes of spiraling energy points like the chakra or acupressure points in a human. This energy moves clockwise with gravity and anti-clockwise with anti-gravity. There are crystals within the earth that receive and transmit energy, assimilate it and send it through the grid as well as storing, amplifying and focusing the energy. The electrical vortexes are male, giving emotional and physical charge while simulating the consciousness. The magnetic of female energy, which enhances psychic preparation and subconscious. Or electromagnetic vortices, which combine both energies to provide balance. There are major portals across the world, such as in Australia, in Tibet, in Peru, the pyramids as we know in Egypt, and also Stonehenge in England, just to mention a few. But there are also minor portals, and also portals within the body, within the chakras. So with all this said, we know that ley lines and the Earth's magnetic grid exists. So we also suggest that vortexes and gateways exist. How do we find these gateways, these doors? through the earth. This particular place is on, we call it a power spot, where energies seem to accumulate, come into like a hub, and then flow off into other so places. Is this the same what they call ley lines? Is that the the ley thing? lines and ley energy all come into it. We've got an energy line running through here that starts in the Isle of Wight, goes through Chichester Cathedral, yeah. goes through the Uffingham White Horse, right. comes through here. It's a band of energy. Would you like to try and find this? Yes, but I doubt I'm going to be as good as well, you are. Well, I don't suppose you will be, because I've been doing this for donkey's years. <laughs> All right. So take two of those rods. Yes, OK. Is With it? these two metal rods, using the medieval technique of dousing, Ron tells me I should be able to detect the spiritual powers running around the stones. I'm trying to deep. Yeah. Yeah. So, no. so just walk forward, tune into this energy yeah. that's coming from the stones, and ask for your rods. And there we go. Yeah. Now, are you doing that, or has that done it by itself? It's done it by itself. There we are. Now that that's done, now just walk out slowly now, just to show that something is happening through your rods or through you. Yeah, this no, is it's through you. This is extraordinary. I've, uh, I've Again, discovered a in. new power that I didn't know I had. Is it a power? Is it a sensitivity? As far as I'm concerned, 80% of the population can do this if they're yeah. interested. What do you, you know about energy? vibration, the power of stone, and you may have heard a lot about the standing stones around the world and how they seem to act as a battery, as an accumulator of energy. And it's the same thing with these stellars. Uh, they are where they need to be because there are certain hot spots on the face of the earth, which are very common, they're everywhere. And they seem to be not just positioned haphazardly uh, around the sides, but because there's some energy already in the ground. And uh, what happens is, uh, the, the choice of stone for what you're building has to be very appropriate. So, a lot of the stone that's used is actually quite conductive. There's a lot of uh, mineral content in it, which has uh, magnetite, which attracts electricity, and also a certain type of quartz, which stores information. So, um, if you, um, by the fact that every living organism uh, has an energy field, an aura, a spirit, if you like, uh, including rock, would you believe? Anybody uh, not believe in dowsing? <laughs> Which is okay to say yes, because some people think, oh, uh, uh, in case you don't, um, dowsing basically is a response, uh, a visual response that is dictated by whatever question I am asking of a local energy field. I, you have to be very specific. So if I'm looking for uh, 
a Buick in the middle of this park, I'm not going to get any response from these rods. So the rods tell me a yes or no, or a direction, or an angle of, uh, of energy. It's still stored in this stone uh, hundreds and hundreds of years after it was carved. And if I get a hit, what I'm looking for right <coughs> now is the aura of the stone. And it looks just like a ripple in water, okay? So wherever these, if anything happens, and I'm gonna look for, uh, in fact, I can do it from the inside, really, so you can all see. Um, so, if I concentrate on the stone and try to link with the aura of the stone, it's right there. Right there. And if you approach it from this side, This side. Right there. And essentially, there is an energy field that goes all the way around the stone. Right there. Panda um, from on top of Cathedral Rock, Cathedral Mountain, in Sedona, Arizona. And I wanted to show you. Uh, me measuring energy with my dowsing rods and a lot of people have seen me do this in houses where I measure energy in houses and put cures in to help elevate the energy which is the thing that powerful people have been doing for millennia this is why churches go where they go and why they feel so uplifting is because they go into very specific places and they're energized and activated to be amazing um, energetically and you feel it when you walk in um, there's some places on the planet that are naturally like that too. There's places where I live in New Orleans, but um, here I came to Sedona specifically to experience these natural vortexes. I think there's about five here. This is the largest one, but I wanted to show my dowsing rods pointing to show me the center of the vortex. It's off to the west. And this one's about a mile in diameter. I, I stood on the edge of it yesterday and got goosebumps and saw vegetation twisting in clockwise patterns, which is the energy of this place. It spirals up clockwise. But I want to show you me measuring energy. What's the energy level of this place by count of 100? About 940. So most homes are 0 to 10. Most uh, sacred spaces are maybe 100. Most sacred places outdoors that you find in a city that feel tremendous. Maybe in the low 100s. 940 is, is a thing.
bring it. We generally refer to gate as a gateway, a point of entry from one space to another, usually enclosed by walls. But there's another definition for a gate, which is an actual or alleged scandal, especially involving a cover-up. And we see all these names referring to cover-ups. So it's not only a gate, a point of entry, but also stands for a cover-up or an alleged scandal. Have all the gates been covered up? I'm 
Yeah.